You can get fine art prints from Jeff Carlson. This is Mac Voices. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Factor. Visit factormeals.com slash macvoices50 and use the code macvoices50 to get 50% off. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we're going to do something just a little bit different today, uh, and I am I love it when we do different things. This time, we're going to talk to Jeff Carlson about a new project of his that is kind of in keeping with what you know Jeff for, but also a little bit different. Jeff, welcome. It's great to have you as always. It's always great to be here. Thanks, Chuck. So, Jeff, I need to be inspired. <laughs> now, let's not get specific here, um, but but from a photography standpoint, I need to be mm-hmm. inspired, and you have a new project going that is aimed at doing just that. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. It, when we're talking about inspiration, um, you know, we're recording this toward the end of September, and this is where things start ramping up for autumn. Um, I want to say... I should know this off the top of my head, but a couple of days ago was like the actual first day of fall. And so, you know, the leaves are starting to change. I imagine where you live, uh, it's probably gorgeous here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, Things are starting to turn. We don't have, you know, as great of fall color as, as you do back east, but it's still pretty spectacular. And I have always been crazy about you know, fall foliage. And that is translated into my, my photography work. So for the past, you know, few years, for example, I've gone and done some photo expeditions uh, with my friend Mason Marsh to go find fall colors. We did one in the Sierra Nevadas. We went to the North Cascades last year. Um, We're going to be going to the, uh, the Oregon coast this year. And that's a long way of saying that, that like, Whatever it is about this season, it's it's the colors, it's the crispness, uh, it's the fact that I get to wear sweaters. <laughs> like I get kind of crazy about fall. And so one of the, the the things that I've always wanted to do as a photographer is make and sell photo prints of my fall images. Now that sounds kind of crazy on the surface. Maybe maybe not crazy. It almost sounds what pretentious because okay i'm a photographer and i make images and yes like i would love to you know sell the images sell big prints um i've i've sold small prints i've sold big prints like that's a thing but then you also have like this other tier of people who you know they make their livings making you know like giant acrylic prints and and whatever um like that's kind of like at another level and you know me, I am mostly a, a writer and photographer and I write about photography and I write about technology, but it's, it's great to have like both legs in, in both of these fields. So I had this idea, I don't know, several years ago, I was like, well, why don't I just sell some of my uh, autumn prints um, just, just during the autumn, basically when people are, you know, uh, more interested in this time and just see what happens. So that's a really long pre- preamble, and we can get into more details. But basically, um, that's what I'm doing. I'm selling little packs of five by seven images, and um, you can go to jeffcarlson.com, and that's that will uh, lead you to them. But it was kind of a, a surprising journey to get here, and this is why I, I, I contacted you, saying, "Like, would this be an interesting?" episode like there's a whole lot to it you know from from the 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 photography and then the printing and building a shop and all of that that i think you know some people who may be on the fence about you know maybe they have some sort of product product or maybe they have some photography that they want to you know do this sort of thing with and it's so easy to get stuck and not know where to start and that that was basically where i was for the last couple of years because i October would come around and I'd be like, Oh, right. This project. All right. I'm going to throw this together. (laughs) And like, you can't just throw it together. And so the middle of October, and of course this is the, the, the the busy iPhone season. So be busy with other work stuff. 
And then it just goes by and I was like, ah, oh. so this time I started early and here we are. And now I'll breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you're right. I mean, when you email me about this, it's like, man, there's so many aspects to this that I want to hear about. Um, not just the photography part, but also the, the back end part of it as to mm-hmm. how I can go online, click a button and have Jeff Carlson photos delivered to me. Um, but let's start with the photography part. Uh, just yeah. because, yes, you've you've been kind enough to share some of your works with me at larger than just normal resolution size, and my God, they're gorgeous. Oh, so you know, you. The, your love of autumn, you know, really does show in those photos. Um, and and so I, it, it's a, I mean, it's got to be a real challenge for a photographer, you know, because look, plenty of people publish photo books. And that's great, but that usually involves a little too much money, and you know it's more almost more of a commitment to buy than yeah. you know what what you're trying to do here. And so that's the first thing. The second thing I really loved is when I went to the website. Yeah, it's the five by sevens that is your are, is your primary thing, but you also sell larger versions. And if I just find a photo that I absolutely love, you give me the option to contact you, and then we can talk about larger or I I presume I'm putting words in your mouth um, but doing like the aluminum or metal printing or glass printing or any of those yeah. options yeah 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 exactly um, yeah so not really sure where to start there um, there are a few things that 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 go into this uh, one is you know a having having images that I love and that I want to share um, and also I mean, you know, to be honest, having images that I think are worthy of uh, a printing, but also b that that someone would want, and so some of this too, I think, is is knowing your audience, um, and here, I mean, this is also really sort of a, a a big risk because, like, I have a few people in mind uh, who have ordered prints that were sort of like the project. I had them in mind when I did the project. I was like, all right, I know somebody who would absolutely love this and, you know, some other people who would be interested in it. So, you know, like, like having at least that sort of uh, specificity definitely helps because I mean, I don't know. I, in the past, I, have suffered from, maybe continue to suffer from that idea that, hey, I've got really nice images. Surely somebody will want to buy this because it is a nice image. And that only goes so far. And to be quite honest, it doesn't go very far because there's so much competition out there. So by trying to narrow this down, trying to to focus this so that it's not just, hey, look at me, I've got uh, prints to sell. Um, I've, I mean, the, there's a spot on my website, jeffcarlson.com that you can, you know, contact me and it's got examples of, of prints and like all of that, but it's, it's just sort of there and static and it's, you know, things that I've done of all types of, you know, landscapes and portraits and like all sorts of things. So by doing this as a like focused project, I'm hoping that, It'll be more successful because it's it's this thing, and and it's not just I've got prints. It's how can we make something that is unique in this case, like selling packs of three five by seven inch prints for an affordable amount, right? So it gives some constraints, and also hopefully will make somebody go to the site and say, "Wow, you know what? Uh, I like the images." And having them in this like, you know, nice little compact pack that's only 50 bucks with free shipping. <laughs> I have to throw that in because now I'm, I'm selling it. Um, you know, like, like that will hopefully remove the friction of dealing with a larger print. Because when you do larger prints, you can either specify things up front. Like, okay, you can only get this image as a you know, 24 by 30 metal print. And that's fine, but that that narrows the, the number of people who would, who would want that. On the other side of that, and this is a perfectly um, 
this is a, a side that I'm perfectly willing to do, but is like you mentioned where you can you know, contact me and say, you know what, I really like this image, but I don't want it as a five by seven. I, I do want something bigger, but what are the options? So, you know, I, I have some set up so that it prints on the same kind of paper at larger sizes, but, you know, someone might want something that is, I don't know, custom framed, or they might want it on acrylic, or they might want it as a metal print with a, you know, little, um, you know, backing board that, you know, lifts it off the wall a little bit. And then that becomes a more complicated thing because then you're entering into a, a conversation. And, you know, conversations are great. And for people who order things that way, it's fantastic. But what I'm hoping to do with this project is just, you know, have the person who says, these are great. I can afford this. I'm just going to order it and it'll be delivered to me. And I know that Jeff printed these and they're signed and I've got this, you know, hand created thing from somebody that I know or whose who's work that I like. So it has that, that kind of focus thing that, that uh, I hope, you know, is appealing to more people. Well, I, I, it's fascinating to listen to your thought process because you're right. I, I've seen images online that I really like, and then somebody wants to sell them to me in 20 by 30, and the mm -hmm. price is, to my way of thinking, a little prohibitive. But I'd still love to own that, you know, maybe in a smaller version. And that doesn't mean I might not eventually love it so much that I'd want the larger version. But, you know, it's it, it's making it affordable. And, you know, I, we, I, we were joking when we started out about inspiration – but I find – I personally find photos like like you're – we're talking about here, they are inspirational because they make me want to go out and try my meager skills at shooting. Um, and I don't mind telling you the best example for that with, with me, I have one wall in my kitchen that is photos of food that I've really enjoyed at different restaurants to nice. inspire me to try to, to – you know, to, to equal it. It always yeah. fails miserably, but I'm inspired to at least try. <laughs> it's sometimes the, the inspiration is the thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Plus the fact that people come in and say, oh, that's interesting. Why did you do that? Or where's this from? Or in this case of what you're doing, isn't isn't that beautiful? You know, that's – where did you get those? The guy must really know what he's doing from a photography standpoint. <laughs> so, um, so at the risk of going a little bit photo geeky – um, tell us about what what paper you selected and you know how you decided on what what process to use. Yeah, so um, it, it's funny. I need to uh, bring up my website to tell you exactly what the what the paper is because it has a it's a uh, it's a paper by Moab, the company Moab. It's an Entrada Rag Bright One Ninety, and that's it's one hundred percent cotton, fine art, acid free stock. Um, so there's, <laughs> that's the whole thing. Basically, um, I wanted something that wasn't just photo paper because again, trying to make this something different, something special. And so this, this Entrada stock, um, it's, it's got some texture to it. It's got, it, uh, like, like a matte finish. Um, in fact, wait a minute. I don't know how well this is going to, going to work on, on the, uh, uh, video here, but basically, I don't know. That is not going to work at all. Well, yeah, it kind of works. Um, basically, it's it's uh, you know it's like soft to the touch, um, and like it has like like a very faint texture, but it's definitely texture. So it's not like like you went to you know the neighborhood drugstore and they ran off a bunch of prints on their, their, their glossy machine and they all, you know, curl up over like 10 or 15 minutes. Um, like, like it feels good. And it's also a really good paper because, you know, um, like in this case, like the, the images, like some of them have like a lot of color and some of them have a lot of detail. So like, like I have, have, you know, a photo of some, um, uh, birch trees and it it holds on to that detail. It doesn't the ink doesn't spread very much, and so it just comes across as again something that is uh, 
different. And also, I mean, it's funny saying these things like my, my little internal marketer kicks in and it was like, Oh dude, you're just selling marketing points right now. But, um, I'm going to say this and, it, and again, it might sound pretentious, um, but like part of what I like about this series of images and, you know, like my desire to go out and, and shoot autumn photography is because of that experience of being there, the experience of, you know, the, the crisp air leaves are changing, you know, somewhere, somebody has got a fireplace going, um, you know, you, you bring along some hot cider. I mean, it's, <laughs> as I said in my newsletter, um, I'm kind of the whole stereotype, but what this is doing is it's, it, it's bringing up a lot of these, these sense memories and these ideas about, well, what was it like being there on this day? And so, that I think is is a big part of why you buy photography. Maybe it's because something just you know looks nice, or it has a really good color scheme that matches with your room or whatever. But at least for me, it's seeing some place that I want to be, or remind me of some place that I was. And so having that 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 sense memory, I think feeds into the idea of using a paper that also has sense to it. It's not generic photo paper. It's got feel, it's got touch. And the the ink, how best to say this? I mean, it 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 sits on there nicely. It's it's in the paper, not really on the paper, if that makes sense. Um I mean, I know it, it's in the paper on all, all, all sorts of other things, but it just has that that slight difference that to me makes it seem like, okay, this is more of a, you know, quote unquote, fine art printing rather than just, I've made some photos, if that makes sense. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Factor. Visit factor.com slash Mac Voices 50 to get 50% off. I don't know about you, but I thought summer was busy. And then I took a good look at my fall schedule. If you are too busy to cook this fall, but want to make sure you're eating well, you need Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy, then go back to crushing your goals. But we're not just talking dinner here. With Factor, you can replenish your snack supply with an assortment of over 45 add-ons, including breakfast items like their delicious apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites, and potato, bacon, and egg breakfast skillet. Or, for an easy wellness boost, try refreshing beverage options like cold-pressed juices, shakes, and smoothies. No kidding, the smoothies are great and they're my favorite. Head to factormeals.com slash macvoices50 and use the code macvoices50 to get 50% off. That's code macvoices50 at factormeals.com slash macvoices50 to get 50% off. Thanks to Factor for supporting Mac Voices. So much of what you're saying I think makes perfect sense, If especially if anyone out there has ever tried to print a photo, either themselves on a color printer at home or take it to the local drugstore and, and any, or any of the photo uh, development places or photo printing places, excuse me, um, that give you the options. You know, do you want this paper? Do you want that paper? Do you want glossy? Do you want right. matte? I mean, those are two of the most gross uh, designations. But, you know, then you get into, do you want cotton? Do you want this? You know, what percentage... <laughs> And and after yeah. a while, your head your head just spins, and it's like, I don't know, just make it look good. And, <laughs> totally, know, and, and 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 that's not what they want to hear. They that that usually gets looks of disdain from those people, right? Right. Um, and, and so, well, and, yeah, and, I uh, go. Sorry. No, but, well, uh, I was just going to jump in and say, you know, part of, of of my job as the photographer and my job as the the, the person making these prints is to make those kind of decisions. And, you know, it's entirely possible somebody would be like, oh, you know, 
I'm not a real big fan of the Moab. I like the, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And that's, that, that's fine. But, you know, I think most people, they're looking for what is this image? What does this image say to me? And having this done on, you know, having this done on a paper that I know that this person has chosen specifically for these characteristics I think that means that that you as the viewer, you as the purchaser, you don't have to think about all of that. You just have to know that, yeah, I've, you know, put in some time, I've done a whole bunch of test prints, I've made sure they look good, all of that. And that's all taken care of because what I want you to focus on is this image really reminds me of, you know, when I was uh, in the, I don't know. <laughs> really bad at example today. You know, when I took a vacation to uh, to Leavenworth, Washington. So for, for a lot of these photos were taken in Leavenworth. Uh, you know, I remember being there, and I remember being there at this time. Or I was a little bit late to the season, and so a lot of the color had gone. And I I want to remember it like this. Um, or you know, like when I was a kid, I used to you know run around in the forest like those kind of things, that's what I want people to be thinking about. And that's hopefully what, what that evokes. And they just know that, yeah, I've, I've done a lot of work and I've, I've made sure that this is going to be a really nice, fine art photo experience. I don't want that point to get lost, Jeff, I, because I, I'm thinking about the, the photos I have in my home and they all have a particular meaning. I've I've never mm -hmm. been one to just you know go to go to one of the home decor stores and pop something up and say oh that looks good you know I wanted to yeah. I wanted to remind me of something and whether it's a golf course I've played or it's a golf course I want to play mm -hmm. um, the, the photos I've taken obviously relate to a place I've been but there are also times when I never seem to do justice to the places I've been that I really love but somebody has somebody like you mm -hmm. that knows what they're doing and can capture the essence. And so right away I'm walking in and saying, I, that I'm there, you know, and, and I'm not at Jeff Carlson's there. I'm at Chuck Joyner's there, but I'm mm -hmm. doing it through you. Then that too sounds a little bit, you know, out there, <laughs> but, 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 I, well, but I, I think it, I think it's, it's true if people really stop and think about what different things mean to them. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I mean, we keep sort of running up against this the, this little pretentiousness barrier, and I think some of this too is just you know, I'm a practical guy talking about uh, you know selling art prints, but there's definitely like like a little bit of a I don't know maybe artificial border there because suddenly we're we're trying to talk about uh, you know, photography invoking an emotion and making, you know, a, a, a product. I mean, honestly, it sounds sort of weird to say I am selling fine art prints because fine art kind of has, I don't know, like, like simultaneously it has like a cachet to it, but also it has like a little snootiness to it. It's like, oh, well, so you take good pictures and now your pictures are fine art. Are they? Well, <laughs> let me tell you what fine art, is. you know, like, like mm -hmm. that's something that's, that that's just out there. And I think that's, I mean, still valid because obviously the, I mean, you could think of all sorts of fine art, you know, like capital F capital a fine art examples of, you know, somebody who sells, you know, wall size murals or they, um, you know, paint their own things. Like there, there's this huge spectrum, but at the same time, I think by, by making this a, a, a fine art thing, it is hopefully elevating things beyond just here's a snapshot that I took. And I think, you know, like that is a, a, a distinction that, some people make it's a it's a distinction i make but then i have to think of of two things like one these are my images and i'm used to seeing them and you know i, I take a lot of photos and and whatever so there's that that aspect of um you know yeah i've got a, 
you know, hundreds of, of fall images. What makes these so special? But so that's one part, set that aside. Um, but then I look at these again and I think about how I made them. And it wasn't just, you know, hey, I pulled up to a location and I rolled down my window and I snapped a picture. Like all of these were taken like on like a, a photo outing, a photo expedition, sometimes on a, you know, like a workshop. Um, they're all very deliberate. I, I don't think there are any of them that were just, oh, hey, this happens to be a good shot. I'm going to take a picture. And then, oh, it's beautiful and magical and all that stuff. Like, that's not how it works. And so I think part of the, the, the fine artness also goes into the fact that, you know, these are, are very, you know, specifically composed. And I spent a lot of time at each location trying to find, the, you know, good lighting, good composition, um, you know, then spent time in Lightroom and sometimes Photoshop, you know, doing the, the, the post-processing. And so it's not just, hey, here's some, some, some photos that I have. It, it turns into the, okay, well, you're buying fine art because not only is it on nice materials like we talked about um, and the places look good, but there's, there's craft behind it. And I think that sometimes gets lost because we're like, oh, we see so many images all the time that it, it, it kind of, not demeans it, but it, it reduces it a little bit. And so then you come across something like this, and you're like, this works as a five by seven. It works really well as a, you know, 13 by 19 or, you know, or larger because there is craft to it. There's deliberateness to it. And that's, you know, a lot of what I, you know, try to teach in my books and when we're, you know, doing the photoactive podcast and the photo combobulate podcast, and we're just, just talking about like the experience of doing it making the photos, editing the photos. And so hopefully all of that just gets poured into something that somebody will want to say, you know what? I really like this image and I really appreciate the work that went into it. And I want this on my wall, or I want to give this as a gift to somebody who also is crazy about fall color, that sort of thing. In a world where our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter and shorter, <laughs> This, I, I do think there's there's a lot to be said for just what we're talking about here. That taking just a just a moment to really appreciate something, you know, stop taking selfies of you, you know, eating a, eating an ice cream cone, and go and appreciate something like this that can get you in that in, in a particular mood or remind you of something. Um, and and of course, I'm I'm with you. Fall is unconditionally my favorite time of year. Fall golf is the best golf because like you say it's, it's nice and crisp it's you know you you aren't too hot you aren't too cold and my god you're surrounded by just incredible colors and scenery I'll almost bet. no matter where you go so yeah I'm, I'm with you i'm with you that should be your next co uh, project is get on golf courses in the fall okay yeah so sounds great <laughs> i don't know i'm I getting mean, jeff i mean Big, big expanses of green with with you know, like surrounded by trees. I think that's that's probably okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Suddenly, I'm giving Jeff Carlson homework. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Usually, I'm the one giving you homework. This is great. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I I, I kind of like this. <laughs> Jeff is back next time to talk about this fine art prints project from a different angle, the business angle. We talk about how he went about building the site to sell you the prints the services he used, and some of the challenges he faced. That's next time on Mac Voices. We'll see you then. As always, I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, Consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices.
Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.